you're depressed, where do you want to go? Nowhere. Who do you feel like seeing? No one. Depression hurts in so many ways. Sadness, loss of interest, anxiety. Cymbalta can help. Cymbalta is a prescription medication that treats many symptoms of depression. Tell your doctor right away if your depression worsens, you have unusual changes in behavior or thoughts of suicide. Antidepressants can increase these in children, teens, and young adults. Cymbalta is not approved for children under 18. People taking MAOIs or thyridazine or with uncontrolled glaucoma should not take Cymbalta. Taking it with NSAID pain relievers, aspirin, or glycogen. <laughs> High up in a university tower, a sniper shoots at unsuspecting victims in the plaza below as scores of students flee. Police have apprehended a lone gunman in an attempt on the life of President Ronald Reagan outside the Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C. Six-hour standoff with police. William Cruz is accused of a violent murder rampage that killed six people, including two policemen. Jeffrey Dahmer stands convicted of strangling and dismembering 17 young men and boys throughout the greater Milwaukee area. Charged with the raping and killing of a seven-year-old girl in a woman's bathroom. With his life imprisonment for drowning her five children in family bath sentences. For the slayings of his mother. The bludgeoning death of her two young sons. For the stabbing death of his son. three months before the son. Yes. I just told my two daughters. Sir? Yeah. Tell me what what happened. Okay, how I mean what's going on right now? I just freaked out and killed her. Are you on medication? Yeah. What kind of beds are you on, sir? I'm on uh, antidepressants. I have to say, whenever I read in the newspaper of some violent act, one of the first questions I ask is was the person on medications. Virginia Tech or the school shootings or the, um, my first thought is always, I wonder what drug he was taking. There are side effects to the use of drugs and also very damaging and dangerous long-term effects, which psychiatrists often don't consider as being important. They induce violence. Unequivocally, like literally two new studies just came out this week that unequivocally implicate benzodiazepines in homicide and suicide, Ugh. right? So you are a, f a very important Finnish study, you know, demonstrated that benzodiazepines are led to like a 223% increase um, risk of committing homicide. They, um, along with antidepressants and actually other psychotropics, including stimulants, you know, all of these medications have been linked to an increase in, in suicide as well. So when I hear about a school shooting or I hear about the German wings, you know, plane What's crash. What's the German wings? That guy, Lubig, like who, who took down the plane, the German wings plane, he just like suicided with a whole plane of people and crashed the plane. Like when I hear about these mass murder, like menace to society kind of situations, my first thought is what psych meds were they on? And, you know, my training basically conditioned me to say, oh, well, they're mentally ill, so obviously they're taking psych right. meds. That's like saying umbrellas cause the rain, right? Right. It's, that's not how it works. Moving on to a different part of the gun violence conversation, there are often similarities between mass shootings in America. And now some are concerned that pharmaceuticals may be a common denominator behind some of these violent acts. Joining me now for more on that angle is Dr. Peter Bregan, psychiatrist and author of numerous books, including Medical Madness, the role of psychiatric drugs in cases of violence, suicide, 
and crime. Dr. Bregan, welcome back to the program. Oh, glad to be with you. So what do you think is the possible role, in particular, of the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor family of drugs, the Prozac family of drugs, in gun violence? How does this work? What, if, it, if, it, if there is a relationship? Oh, there's a clear relationship. I've actually been involved with a number of cases as a legal expert where I've been able to actually track the development of it. In Eric Harris's case, for example, he was started a year earlier on an SSRI for a few days, had a bad reaction, and then was put on Luvox, which is an SSRI, fluvoxamine. And you can actually see him become crazy during the time he's on the drug. He's given the drug for obsessive problems. Uh, he's not described as in any way mentally disturbed. And then you watch him get more and more disturbed. And we know that Eric Harris was taking the drug on the day of the shooting because he had, quote, a therapeutic level. That's very ironic, according to the autopsy in his blood. And I've confirmed that through FDA reports, and I've confirmed it through the autopsy report. Um, I had another case of Joseph Westbecker, who um, went into his uh, former place of work with an AK-47 and killed eight people and wounded uh, many others. And he became um, psychotic while on Prozac. These people don't always get psychotic. He be got psychotic, got uh, delusioned about what was being done to him at work. He's so, been disturbed about Dr. work before, but never violent. Dr. Yes. Bregan, we, we, we have just about a, a minute and a half. I'm, I'm curious, oh, what's okay. the mechanism by which these drugs make it in some small, because you know, some people clearly need thera therapeutic medications, presumably. What's the mechanism that these well, drugs I use? I don't take that position about okay. these drugs. All right, so what's the, how is it that they cause people to feel like it's okay to kill somebody? Well, they cause a lot of agitation and anxiety, and that can tip a person over. They can cause akathisia, which is an abnormal movement disorder, tips people over, they can make people manic, they can make people psychotic. And by the way, the Washington Naval Yard uh, gun massacre man was on trazodone, an antidepressant that uh, also blocks the reuptake of serotonin. So he's being affected in so a similar do, way. Is, 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 the, is one possible mechanism that basically by reducing your emotional level, by reducing affect, where you're also reducing empathy so these people don't view the people they're shooting as human beings, they view them as objects? There's very clear studies that that is one of the clinical effects, is the loss of feeling for other people, um, in addition to making people psychotic and agitated and anxious. That's very true. Yeah, remarkable. So we need to have a conversation, a broader conversation, not just about guns and how we license them and how we distribute them and all that kind of, but also about our psychiatric medications because of all these correlations. Dr. Peter Bregan, thanks so much for being with us tonight.